Hello and welcome to Seven Days of Halloween. Hi everybody, it's Monica and welcome back to Tailor Made Cards for You. Well today I'm back with another Halloween video for my Seven Days of Halloween. And today I wanted to share with you how I use old books to craft with. Now one of the things I love best about some of these old reference uh, desk reference books are that the the paper is very thin so it's perfect for crafting and if you can find a uh, subject matter that works with your crafting even better dictionaries are great old uh, physician reference books are uh, great as well and that's what i'm working with today is an old uh, desk reference book from a physician and as you can see not only do you have great words that you can use but you have pictures and charts so they work great for your crafting now the set we're gonna play with today is uh, one of the newer sets from Tim Holtz. And it is the Rest in Peace. Uh, Rest in Peace, I should say. And uh, I love this big skeleton face. It's perfect to make a card um, or a mixed media item. And we're gonna do a little bit of both today. So let's go ahead and just kind of jump right in. All right, so the first thing that I did is I cut out uh, some five by seven cardstock, and this is heavier cardstock because we're gonna be adding some uh, liquid, uh, what is this? Oh, that's not what we're gonna use. We're gonna be adding uh, acrylic gesso because we're gonna wanna mute this a little bit. Now, this is purely optional. You don't have to mute it, but I like to mute it just so um, when you stamp your image is a little bit more predominant than, than the uh, words you might see. So I'm going to go ahead and figure out what I want to work with here. And uh, let's see, percentage of women experiencing an unintended pregnancy. Ooh, that's kind of crazy. All right. Uh, maybe a little bit too controversial for my card. Let's see what else we can work with here. Um, well, I like the laboratory, so maybe we'll work with that. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to adhere this to your cardstock. And I'm going to use Mod Podge. I know that uh, Tim Holtz has some collage medium that would work nice as well. Uh, but I just happen to have this on my desk, so that's what we're going to use. Now, when you use Mod Podge, it might warp your card a little bit. Um, but remember, we can we can fix that by drying it um, by putting oversized books on them. There's a lot of ways that you can um, fix the warping on your cards. And I'm being generous here because what I'm gonna do is come in with this tool here. And, and this is rubber, it's flat, but I like it because it and enables you to smooth out all of the extra medium you might have. All right, and I don't remember what that's called, uh, but I'll make sure I find it when I list the products. And then we're going to go ahead and just add this. And I'm gonna try to do it straight. It doesn't have to be straight, but we're gonna attempt to do that here. And then I'm just smoothing this out. And then, you know, if you want to, you can come back with your tool to help get out some of the bubbles all right and then i will just take my scissors and trim this down now if you wanted to tear the paper you know cut it out first and then tear it you could do that um that way you have it look a little bit rough um there's a lot of ways you can go about doing this but I'm just kind of adding it here um, and then I'll, I'll trim it. And then if any of it didn't stick, you can just kind of come in and add it to the sides, even on the top. Remember this paper is really, really thin, so you can also add your medium to the top. All right, okay. Now, when this dries, it will make your brushes hard. So you may want to have um, a glass of water, you know, that you can put your tools in, um, or you can stop and clean them as you go. But just 
kind of keep that in mind. And we're gonna let this dry a minute here while I take my advice and go get a cup of water. All right, so I went ahead and um, helped it dry with my heating tool and then I trimmed it down. Now remember, we started with a card, uh, a piece of paper measuring five by seven. And then what I did is I trimmed it down a quarter of an inch because I like to add layers to my cards. Uh, so next we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna work with this acrylic gesso. And if you've never worked with gesso before, um, number one, apparently it, it does dry up, so we might have a problem here. Um, and number two, it does mute your paper. So let me see if I have another one and I'll be right back. All right, so I did not find more gesso, um, and that is unfortunate. Um, I haven't been doing a lot of crafting, apparently, recently. Um, because I have been busy running my shop and working, but we're gonna go ahead and, and improvise here. So I found some white uh, paint, acrylic paint, and then I also have this chalky finish, and I think I'm gonna try to use the chalky finish, and then we're gonna just kind of mute it down a bit. Um, I used this recently, so I know that it uh, is still in good shape, and I probably should not have put in my paintbrush that had color but I'm okay with it being a little tinted so we're gonna go ahead and just add this randomly and then we're gonna smooth it down because I do want this somewhat muted but not completely covered and I like the fact that it's chalky so that'll that'll be even nicer all right and I'm just kind of randomly adding this Again, I want the words in the background, but I don't want it to take over. Now, Gesso does this exact same thing. It mutes it. It kind of gives it a coat, helps it, uh, helps you stamp better. Um, but really what I use Gesso for is as a primer or to mute something. But this seems to be working okay. We're gonna see how we stamp on it because that's gonna be the big question. But as far as muting my paper, this does seem to work. And now I've contaminated my chalky white finish. Um, but you know what, I use this for my mixed media so I'm okay with it being a little bit uh, tinted brown because after all I am a vintage inspired crafter so I don't mind the brown mutes. So let's go ahead and See if we can clean this up a bit. And now we're gonna go ahead and dry it so we can do some stamping on it. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, grunge this up a bit. So I'll put this aside, figure out what colors I'm gonna use. So definitely going to use my vintage photo for a brown background. Uh, so let's do that. Now I think you could probably use uh, your Distress inks as well as your Distressed Oxides. I think any of these would work. I'm just trying to add some age to my background here. Alright, and then let's go ahead and add in some antique linen. Try not to contaminate my inks. And when I do this, I really don't have any rhyme or reason around it. I'm just trying to get some color on, on my background. And I think I want to also add some red. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add some fired brick distressed oxide. Add a little bit of water. Let's see what we can add here. Just again, looking to add some color combinations here. All right, it's pretty good. All right, 
And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and come in with some blending. So the first one I'm going to use is Antique Linen. And I just re-inked these the other day. So hopefully we'll get some nice color. One of the things I love about these inks is you can buy re-inkers. Um, so you can keep these colors forever and ever and not have to keep buying new ink pads. All right, so we went ahead and aged up the paper. Now, as a side note, I have the domed uh, blending tools and then I also have the flat ones. But you know, my, my dome ones don't stand up. So while, you know, it's kind of nice to have it rounded, I kind of like them to stand up because I put them on my, you know, on my ink pads. So the jury's out on that one. I haven't decided if I'm gonna continue to buy the domed ones or the flat ones. You know what, let me know in the comments what you prefer. Do you like the domed ones or do you like the flat ones? I'm curious what everybody thinks about that. All right, and then I think, yeah, I was thinking about using um, my black soot, but I'm gonna actually, I think I'm gonna stick with my walnut stain. Maybe we'll come in with some black soot, we'll see. Now, if uh, when you put your paper down, if it starts to curl up a little bit, you know what I do? I, I work with it, I live with it. Um, I might tear it a little bit. Let's see if I can get a tear in here. Because I think that would be awesome. Tear it a little bit. So don't, you know, imperfections sometimes are good things because then you can work with them. So I, I like that. And then I have it curling up a little bit. Yeah, it's good stuff. And then maybe, let's see, maybe I'll help it stay. And a little bit of sticking, yep, I am sticking my finger in here and we're going to add a little bit of that so now it looks like that was intended which maybe it was you know i like to have my paper curl up a little bit all right and then you might want to add a drying tool to it but i'm just going to dab it like that all right so that looks pretty good um if you want to add you know more i think i'm going to add a little bit more because I want to have more kind of like splotches, I guess. So let's see if we can get some splotches. Ooh, it's nice and dark, I like it. It's pretty good. All right. So I went in with, uh, Walnut stain, probably shouldn't have done that. Uh, add a little bit more. And, and again, it, it you're gonna know when it's finished. I just you know, keep playing till I know, you know, that I, I'm happy with the background. Um, so figure out what works for you and then just keep going until you're happy with the background. I'm gonna add a little bit more red, but first, Let's try this. Okay, so I think that's gonna work for me. Now, a couple of things here. Remember, you are working with the thin dictionary paper or the reference guide, so your paper is very thin, and the more water that you add to it, um, you know, it might tear. So kind of keep that in mind. So you may want to um, not be too generous with the water, but just enough to get your blending. Um, it fades it more, which is kind of what I like, 
because now the text isn't as predominant as it was when we started, but it still really makes a cool background and it's gonna be perfect for stamping. So let's go ahead and see what we can put together here. Okay, so like I said, we're working with the new Rest in Peace stamp set from Tim Holtz uh, through Stampers Anonymous. Um, and these are the deep rubber, uh, deep rubber stamps, which I like. Um, you get a lot of great detail um, and they hold up really nicely. I've had acrylic stamps that actually tear on me um, and not in a particular company, but just if you know your acrylic stamps can can get dry they just they can um but the rubber the deep rubber are great and every once in a while i do go through and clean them for the most part i don't clean my stamps every time i stamp with them but if you want to keep the detail you might have to do that and i might actually do a video because at the beginning of the year um because that's typically when i'll do it i'll kind of go through my stamp sets um at the beginning of the year and do a good cleaning um to start out the year nice Right, so I'm just adding ink to get some good pressure here. Uh, remember, your paper might have some wrinkles, so you might have some imperfections. But you know what? I like the imperfections. Uh, if you don't, just kind of keep that in mind when you're working with your paper. All right, I think that looks pretty good. I am going to add white embossing powder to these just to make the images stand out a little bit more. And the reason for that is because again, my paper is a little bit bumpy um, and I want, I want my images to stand out. Now, when you are adding, oops, sorry about that. When you are adding embossing powder make sure your background is dry because as you know embossing powder will stick to not only ink but anything that's wet so if you don't want to have dried plastic on your background uh, make sure that your background is completely dry before you add your powder So you can see the difference. It really does make the image pop when you add the embossing powder. And I am using clear, which is, it's nice because you can work with any type of ink or any color of ink um, to make it pop. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is add some words. Now, I like this set because there are some great words here. Um, Cascico, Undertaker. I think I'm gonna use this one. Yeah. And then condemned is gonna go on this side here. And then I'm also gonna use the let's see, probably this one. I haven't used this one yet, so we'll probably use this one like here. Okay, so that's kind of the layout we're gonna work with. Uh, let's go ahead and move this over. and get to stamping. So let's do this one first. Now that I know my layout. Should be real easy stamps. Should get good, nice images the first time around. Again, Stampers Anonymous make great stamps. Let me give that a dry in just a second. And then we'll do the condemned.
Now, as you can see on the Misty, there are lines here. So if you like it to be completely straight, you can work with the lines. I don't care. Um, I don't mind it to be a little bit wonky. Um, but I know some of you guys like the perfect stamps. So if you need to light it up, by all means, line it up. All right. Now, yeah, with this one, as you can see, you've got some really... Uh, I call it silhouette silhouette stamps the, the letters um, where it's all one color ink so typically you are gonna need a couple of passes for your stamp but it looks pretty good I don't want mine perfect I'd like to have some of the imperfection but, but again that's me if you need it to be perfect stamp it as many times as you need to and then we'll put casket up here all right Oh, I'm loving this. It looks good. Now, if you are going to make several cards like this, this is a really easy design for your assembly line. Do all your backgrounds first. You know, get your Mod Podge out. Um, add all your backgrounds. When they dry, add your gesso or your chalky finish paint like what I used. Uh, let those dry come in and do your backgrounds let those dry and then finally do your stamping and again with the the misty um, or with any of your stamping platforms uh, you can get a great assembly line all right so let's go ahead and add our embossing powder before this dries too much I think I'm gonna need to get more embossing powder. I usually like to have these filled up just for ease. But again, I haven't been doing a lot of crafting this year. I've been some, um, but not a lot. And that's just because I've been trying to, number one, you know, I have a digital image store. So my digital image creations take a lot of time. And uh, what I do is I scan my old vintage ephemera and then I make kits. So that takes a lot of my time. Um, but I've really missed crafting. So I definitely wanted to do my seven days of Halloween because it's something I really enjoy. And I know several people asked me about it. So I just told myself I needed to buckle down. All right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and use my distressing tool here to grunge up the edge a little bit. You know, I just thought of something. I do want to trim this a little bit more. So let me trim it and I'll be right back. Okay, so I trimmed it just enough. So as you can see, I'll have a little bit of a black border and that's, I just like to layer my cards. I think they look better. So we are using this tool. One of the best things invented. I know some people use scissors, which is great, but I, I like the feel of this. Um, I can go in hard, you know, and grunge up as much as I want to. Um, and I'm not going to cut it or tear it. Well, I should say, sometimes I tear it, but again, I'm okay with that. I just don't want to cut it. Okay. Makes a little bit of a mess, but you know what? We'll vacuum afterwards. All right, and then I'm gonna come in again with my, let me think. You know what? I think I'm gonna use my Distress Crayon. Hold on a second. Okay, so this isn't for everyone. Some people don't like to get their fingers dirty. I don't mind. So, my distress crayon it's very well loved probably need another one 
uh, but we're just going to add this to the edges. Yeah, I probably need another one. I need a few supplies. I probably need to go out and make an order. Let's see. Yeah, you're going to see what I mean here in a second about dirty fingers. Yeah, I probably need to get another black crayon. I'm just working for now. Uh, doesn't oh yeah it's still coming up a little bit all right good okay so we're just gonna smear it and this is the part a lot of people don't like because it does dirty your fingers but you know what that's what soap and water is for all right so okay looks good now we're ready to mount it on some black cardstock using my three-in-one beacon. And then all you gotta do is add it to a card base. So as you can see, you guys, this is a great stamp set. Uh, on this particular one, the heading that I used was the casket, but you have you know, other headers as well. You have the undertaker header you could use. You have um, some word, look at that real quick. Got your casket that could have gone, like I said, that's one we used on top. Condemned could have gone on top. Undertaker can go on top. And then you've got some great smaller stamps in this step, in the stamp set. So it's it's a great set. I try to pick the sets that I know I'm going to be able to use several of the stamps. Some of the stamp sets, you know, have one or two stamps that I like. And I just, I try to stay away from those because I want to get the most for my money. All right, and then we're gonna add some hardware to this. Okay, so I wasn't sure what I was gonna do, but I think, I was originally I was thinking I was gonna just add these to the edges, but I'm gonna add this metal tag, just because I like it. Now when I am working with Tags. I do like to glue it down first and then add my breads. And then I have this poker tool here that I use. Don't poke your finger, of course. So just be aware of where that's coming through when you're using it. And then I do have some brads that are longer. I just didn't grab those. This seems to be working okay. I know Tim Holtz's breads are longer, uh, so these probably are not his, but these, these are working okay. All right, so there you go. I'm going to go ahead and I'll mount it onto some cardstock, probably put a creepy saying inside, and then I'll be good to go. So as always, I'll leave a list of all the products that I've used to create this card along with the links to the stores. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed the tutorial on how to use old papers. Um, you know, again, just old books, old versions, but what you want is, is the thinner paper because that's really what works well. It's kind of like tissue paper. And I am going to have some sets in the shop. So uh, like I said, check out the links and I'll, I'll link to the paper that I used. Um, so if you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. And um, I will be back with another video tomorrow for my seven days of Halloween. We'll see you again next time.